Hey, you want to get high, man? Now stimulate your mind. Get up, Chucky! What have we got here? A fucking comedian. Hey, Rojan Kim. Hello, and welcome to the Rojan Kim cast. It's me, Rojan Kim. Thank you so much for joining me today, Monday. It's Monday. Is it the day before a primary? Some kind of primary thing, some kind of political thing. I don't know. Sanders, Bloomberg, Klobuchar, Blood Buttigieg. I don't know. I don't know, man. Who's it going to be? I don't really. I don't, I don't know. I don't care i don't care i don't know is it my fault though is it my fault that i've lost faith in our political system that i've lost faith in the government the government who for the past 20 years has been waging a war that i said back then was not good and it still is not okay so i feel like i was right on that one all right (laughs) There was a time, 2003, right after the launching of the Iraq War, that I, my, what is that, um, 16, 17 years ago, okay, so I was 22, 23, no, 25, I was in my 20s, I was a young guy, I was still young, I was younger than now, at least, Ah, right, at least that would follow in the past. 16, 17 years ago, I was 17 years younger, and back then, I protested the war in Iraq, all right, so I didn't think Iraq had anything to do with 9-11, I felt like, well, this seems like an excuse to go to war in another country, and then, um, it's now 17 years later, (laughs) it's been 17, like, if I had a baby, right after the war was declared, that baby would be looking at colleges right now, right? That baby would also be on the phone like all the time would and probably just text me instead of talking to me. You know what I mean? And honestly, it would probably be like a right wing, some kind of Republican, super Republican just to piss me off. You know, that's probably... (laughs) But anyways, thank God I did not have a kid uh, that I know of. I'm pretty sure I didn't. Thank goodness I don't have a child because that child would have grown up with war for his whole life. I'm assuming his gender. I'm, I apologize. Could be a girl. Could be a, uh, both. Could be a him, her, trans. Would I have let my kid transition? I don't know. I had a pretty traditional upbringing. I'm not sure if I... <laughs> I don't know. I would have handled it. I don't know. I don't know how I would have handled it if my kid was trans, okay? I'm sure. I'm sure I'd love him, her, Shit, see? I just mean how I handle that. I don't mean how I'd handle accepting it. (laughs) I don't mean if I would love it or not. It's just what language I would use. I would just ask, sure, you know? I would ask Zim or whatever. Whatever you want. Fucking do it. But don't tell me that the government has any right to tell me what to do. (laughs) All right? I just don't want the government telling people what to do. That's all. That's not so bad. Come on, guys. Let's get with it. What are we talking about? Trans rights? All right. They're tra- they're all right. They're fine. I don't care. Zero. You know, it's uh, the whole thing to me is silly. You know, I'm all about people, humanity. I don't care about all these divisions. These divisions are exactly that. Just divisions. Divide and conquer. By whom, you may ask? By the real people who benefit. Well, who benefits, right? Kui Bono, that's what Lenin, <laughs> V.I. Lenin, Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, that's what he asked, who benefits, right? I can't remember about what, but I'm sure it's something very important, but in this case, it has nothing to do with what he said Kui Bono about, I'm saying Kui Bono now, and who benefits over the divisions, okay, the divisions between us, who benefits, right? Well, Let's just take a look, right? Because I feel like everything is, in this country, in the United States, everything is seen through sort of polarities, dualities, black and white, left and right, right? You're just sort of man, woman. Everything is sort of duality because everything is a war. Everything is phrased in direct conflict with each other. 
without understanding it's not just black and white, you know, much like the yin yang, there's a little piece of black inside of white and a little piece of white inside of black and that they both make up each other. You know what I'm saying? And you know, the one of the frustrating things about the fact that race in America is seen through a black white dichotomy is that Asians invented the damned yin yang. You know what I'm saying? We invented the ha <laughs> I'm just kidding. We didn't all. Just Chinese. The Chinese did. I can't take it. Koreans didn't invent the yin-yang. The Chinese invented it. But the, there you have it. You know what I'm saying? I wish I could be like a Chinese supremacist or like an Asian supremacist, you know, and just be like, the Asian people invented the yin-yang, right? But white people came and changed it. The white man came and changed the yin-yang from black and yellow to black and white, right? Some people still know the truth about the ancient yin-yang that was black and yellow, like the prophet Wiz Khalifa (laughs) with his song, Black and Yellow. Um, It's few and far between, you know. Not a lot of people know that. All right, guys. Let's move on from my Asian... That's my Asian hotep bit. Um, That's my Asian uh, supremacist or hotep. Hotep, hotep, of course, is a slang. For those of you in the know, you already know this, but it's a slang term for black people who are always like talk about hearkening back to the time of the Egyptians and how black people ruled as kings and, and all of that stuff. I feel like, you know, Asian Asian people do that too. Come on. We're like, we invented everything, right? Even though we is... So, I mean, it's just based on looks, right? Because Korean people are not Chinese. They'll tell you that now, especially with the coronavirus coming around. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the first ones to tell you uh, we are not uh, Chinese. Uh, you know what I mean? Like not because you know there's a lot of hubbub going around in America right now about the coronavirus. People are scared. Honestly, it makes sense. You know, it's scary pandemic disease is scary. It's always been a scary thing. And if anything, you know, uh, Asians shouldn't be. It's they're no stranger to being um, discriminated against because of disease, right? SARS, when SARS came out, that was a whole thing. I'm sure Africans were uh, discriminated against because of Ebola, right? I'm sure Mexicans were discriminated against because of Montezuma's revenge. You know, it's just a natural thing. It just happens. And of course, you know, back in the day, who could forget you know, the way people thought about, you know, the way people treated white people over smallpox, right? Because <laughs> they just happened to be spreading that shit. It happened to be that white people, wherever they went, this fucking smallpox seemed to spread. Can you imagine a couple of natives talking about it and being like, you know, one's just like, I don't know, man. I think, uh, I think the white people are, are fucking. They're spreading. I think they're diseased, man. I think they're dirty. I think they're. It's because they're white. That's what it is. It's the white people. And the other guy's like, what? Come on, man. That's not true. Right? I mean, first of all. They're not. They're not getting sick. How come they're not? Only we're getting sick, and they're not getting sick. And the other guy's like, "Well, because they're fucking evil. They're evil devils. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't make them sick. It makes us sick because we're good. We're good. They're bad. And that's why. And like, ah, oh, shit. You think so? I mean, they're, going, they're giving us blankets and stuff. They seem pretty nice, right? And the other guy's like, I don't know, man. I think uh, I wouldn't touch those white blankets. You know, they got their white." The white whiteness, the white devilness is because they didn't know about germs, right? So to them, it's like the white devil medicine, the white evil devil black medicine, <laughs> the white evil poison medicine is is everything they touch is poisoned by their white devil medicine. Um, so, <laughs> so I can understand. You know, it's completely natural, but isn't it time? Isn't it time that we just uh? transcend race and truly understand that it's about geography. You know what I mean? It's about geography. It's like the fucking virus came from this one place in China called Wuhan and spreading from that place. And yeah, you can be like, yeah, if you're Chinese, maybe you're from Wuhan or if you're Asian, maybe you're Chinese and maybe you're from Wuhan. But really what we need to be doing is just locking down um, everything in Wuhan and probably China, right? Should probably be like, hey guys, how about everybody just stay home? Stay home. Um, let this thing die out because it seems to be spread through contact. So just the let us all just that's what the experts say, you know, about this kind of stuff. You gotta like shut everything down, make people stay at home, 
the disease kind of burns itself out. The only problem is that the entire world economy is dependent on China being productive. And so apparently, just from the news podcasts and whatever that I'm listening to, uh, it'll be like April. April is going to be the time when it all comes to shit <laughs> if this shit doesn't uh, pan out. So we'll see. Hey, is it, it, it might not even be the pandemic that's the issue. It could actually be um, the economic crisis that ensues from the pandemic that's even worse, right? It might not even just be a pandemic at all. It might end up becoming an epidemic, right? Maybe it ends up being controlled, doesn't spread overseas. It's just China that's kind of fucked because of this. But then production in China plummets, right? Nothing happens. Nothing. No more iPhones. No more foods. No more medicines. Did you know all of our medicine is made overseas in China? You know, like no more computers. No more the economy comes grinding to a halt. And then you'll be begging, be begging for these Chinese people <laughs> to be going back to work, right? You'll be begging them. Please, please, sorry we made fun of you for being sick. Sorry, please go back, please. Because, you know, have fun when things just aren't on the shelves anymore. No first aid kits, no, I don't know, toilet paper, no water. I don't know what's made in China. I'm assuming everything is made in China. Am I also fear-mongering? Sure. Is it time to get a gun now? Why not? Get a Chinese-made gun. You know what? <laughs> I hear they've been doing pretty good with that stuff. Uh, they might have coronavirus all over it, though, so you better wipe it down. All right, that's... Is that? I mean, it's just... Isn't it ironic that the people who are being racist against Asians for coronavirus are themselves infected with the virus of racism? <laughs> Excuse me. I might try that out. I might try. I might see if that gets a laugh or might make people uncomfortable. But I think you know that's what this is all about, guys. You're helping me discover these things, right? These things. I think it's just prop- look. I for one don't believe in race or believe in that it's actually meaningful beyond physical appearance and you know some semblance of where you're people came from but honestly it's where you grew up like you know what i mean like i don't have more in common with a korean person from korea than i do with a person from la i have more in common with a person from la you know what i mean we can talk about stuff i can't talk to anything i i can speak in korean to a korean person from korea and all i will be telling them is that i can't speak korean very well <laughs> okay but if you speak english we can talk about baby yoda okay we can talk about <laughs> Talk about the new season of Vikings, which is, you know, very interesting. You know, it's involving the Rus Vikings. It's, uh, we're going eastward. Very, come on. Come on. Who's into that? I could talk about entertainment. I talk to you about that. But uh, otherwise, I can't really talk to you about too much. But, you know, I think disease, the whole connection of disease and racism makes sense, right? Because it comes out of fear. Right? Fear. Racism also comes out of fear. You know, fear comes out of the ignorance. Right, and then when we start to fear things, we start to hate them. Right, and then the hate leads to, you know, things like this, things like exclusion, things like violence, things like that you know. And it's um, I blame the media. Honestly, <laughs> media should be doing a better job trying to calm people down, but instead they're just like Chinese coronavirus, Chinese, Chinese corona, Chinese coronavirus, the Chinese coronavirus, the Chinese at the Wuhan, the Chinese. The Chinese coronavirus, the Chinese, you know, and that might be making people crazy. But, you know, that's kind of like, that's kind of what the news does, right? They've just been like the Trump and Trump and Russia, Russia and Trump, the Chinese and the coronavirus and Trump, and Russia, the Mexicans, the cartel, the coronavirus, Chinese, Trump, Trump, Chinese, guns, hurricanes, weather, Chinese, hurricanes, guns, Chinese guns, Trump, guns, guns. Trump, whether, whether or not we're going to die is irrelevant. We are. <laughs> we're all going to die. We're dying, everyone. We're dying. right. Everything is poison. We're all going to die. And that's sort of what um, drives eyeballs and traffic. If it bleeds, it leads. That's all that matters. That's all that matters is getting the clicks, getting the eyeballs, getting the ratings, getting the subscriptions, because then you can charge that sweet ad money, right? And... Um, that is what the number one value in this country is. It's really scaring you so much that you keep watching, keep watching, keep fighting. Keep fighting. Never mind that the real game 
It's probably the very few who have everything versus all of us who have nothing. Really, that's really what the real game is, right? It's really between the elite and the populists, right? It's populism versus elitism. That's where, that's the real, it's not left or right. It's not left or right. It's populism versus elitism. That's really what the uh, dichotomy in this country is. It's what it's always been. And now it's beautifully revealing itself. Yeah, it's Black History Month. You know, and nobody's even talking about it. Nobody cares. But I think in some ways that's good. You know why? Not because black people are bad. Because black history is American history. It's all of it. It should be part of every single month. It should, we should have black history century. You know what? The past centuries, every century up, up until this one, including this one, is black history century, right? And not only black history. I guess you could throw in Asians now that we bombed the shit out of them, right? We nuked them. Fuck <laughs> You know, dropped enough munitions on them. I feel like you can weave them into the tapestry. Right. Right. Okay. You got your genocide of natives, Native Americans. You could throw them in there too. You got got a a multi uh, faceted tapestry. Okay. It's a beautiful thing filled with death and destruction, but still beautiful. Right. Because we're here now. Now I'm here. Okay. In Rome. I made it. I made it, everyone. I made it. All my ancestors. Right. Kim, Kim of Kim family. Made it. Here I am in America. I could say whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> no one will kill me for saying fuck the president. <laughs> fuck him. But also fuck uh, the government and the media and everybody and all of them. The elites. Right? Because they don't care about us, man. They don't care about us. They don't care about you. They don't care about me. They say they do, but in the end, what do they do? Look at what they do, not what they say. Look at what they do. They do. More tax cuts for the rich. More budget, bigger budgets for the military. Bigger budgets for more war overseas. You know, military budgets to countries, right? More people in jail. More whistleblowers in jail. People in jail for telling the truth, right? Who's in jail now? You know who will... uh, There's no whistleblower behind this whole impeachment thing. You know why? Because they're not in jail. You know who's in jail? Chelsea Manning, okay? That's a whistleblower. Yes, Obama pardoned her, but then... She wouldn't fucking rat out on um, Assange, right? She wouldn't play ball and do what the Democrats asked her and fucking say that Assange is working with the Russians. She wouldn't do it because he, he he wasn't, okay? So they threw her in jail. She's still in jail now. Obstruction of justice. That's what they wanted to do, right? That's what they wanted to do with Trump, okay? Throw him in jail for obstruction of justice for standing up for something. Not that he's even good or I like him, okay? I'm just saying... <laughs> That's what happens to whistleblowers, right? And this is not lost on people, right? But because of what the media, you know, our leaders are telling us, you can't help but believe, okay, well, then there must be a Russian takeover of our country. We must be living in the grips of fascism. We must be, you know? But honestly, it just seems like it's fascist just because their side lost, right? It doesn't seem like it's... these. They do the same shit when they're in power. Under Obama, we expanded the wars. We expanded more tax cuts for the rich. We expanded, you know, more w- division of uh, wealth, or the more the rich got richer and the poor got poorer at a greater rate. Even, you know, that it's like everything that's supposed to have taken place under a progressive president did not. In fact. Uh, it seemed to support the status quo, <laughs> the military industrial complex, the banks, you know, even the insurance companies with Obamacare doesn't seem like to have actually helped the people. In fact, it seems to the people who can't afford anything at all, they get taxed. So it seems like kind of worse. Right. So that doesn't seem lost on uh, especially people who voted for Trump. Right. I feel like that's probably why they voted for him, because that's not lost on them. You know, and here we are. Our leaders have failed us, guys. What do we do? That's why, that's what's scary about coronavirus, not the virus itself, but the fact that I, it's hard to trust our leadership. You know, it's hard to trust, you know, look at, first of all, they, well, at least we're not in China because God, you can't trust them, right? Can't trust the central government, giant central government to do anything, but you can you trust ours, right? Can you trust ours to tell us the truth? Can you trust ours to, these are the people you want to be steering us through crises like giant pandemics? Right? Like Mike Bloomberg, that's who you want. 
<laughs> that's who you want to do. That's the, look at all the Democrats. You, the, who inspires leadership? Who is the one who's going to take us through these crises? Like if there's a pandemic, if the fucking asteroid comes, if a nuke goes off, if there's war, if there's fucking, you know, a depression, who's going to help? Who's going to be the one who's going to, who inspires confidence, right? People would rather have Donald Trump than the alternative. That's what. <laughs> I think you have to see, look at that. You, have to, you, you know, there's something about that you have to really recognize and look, and then that's the only way you can fix it, right? Until then, it's just going to be he's going to win and his side's going to win because the other side is not coming to terms with why they lost. Still, still the Democrats are not admitting that they turned their backs on the working class, that they lost the populist vote that they're supposed to have, that they lost people on issues like immigration, right? That the, on trade, that free trade is not quite working, that the neoliberal policies the past, whatever, eight years, have not been working. The banks are richer, right? The people in Wall Street are richer, but the people aren't. People are poorer. People are actually making less money. So, I don't know. Something's going to give, right? That populism, that's the energy that Bernie Sanders is, you know, capitalizing on. It's, I don't know if that's the right socializing on. Right, That's the that's this energy that Trump capitalized on. That's just the populist energy that's out there. The reason it's out there is because our leaders have failed us. So what do we do? Get a gun? <laughs> we do we arm ourselves? Well, I mean, honestly, I think that is, it's not irrational. I mean, more and more, I'm like, okay, I get it. I get why you would think that. But I don't know, man. I mean, it's. I don't think that that's really... Um, I think it's gone to... I mean, if it gets to that point, I'm not sure where we're going to go from there. You know, I think it, it can inevitably only decline into war. So it's probably best to not get to a place where we're shooting each other in the streets because we disagree about something, right? Disagree about politics. Probably not the best, right? In fact, if anything, if I was a member of the elite and was afraid of a populist uprising, I would want them shooting each other in the streets. I think I would want that because at least they're not coming after me. The last thing I would want for them is to unite and turn their guns toward me and want to take my stuff, right? So so that's the reason why I don't think, you know, the answer is to arm arm up, arm up. I mean, maybe it, the answer is to arm up just to protect yourself, but not necessarily arm up because of some coming war or some... It's, it's unpredictable what that would be. For instance, I would like to buy a shotgun just so I can hunt some pheasant. Um, <laughs> I want to learn to hunt pheasant and duck. Uh, and, uh, you know, and other things, turkeys, uh, all birds. I'm only hunting birds. Well, the birds are what's easy here. Here I am talking about hunting. Listen, but that's it, you know? I'm not going to use this gun to protect myself. That's not... I don't even think I would... I don't even know if I would... Uh, it, you know what I mean? Like, that's rationally not something that I think is feasible. However, I think there's always hope. You know, I don't give up on hope. Uh, here's the reason. Why haven't we killed ourselves yet? We could have nuked ourselves this whole time. We've had 60 years to nuke ourselves. We haven't, right? We've had... We were on the verge of societal collapse in the 60s and 70s. There was riots everywhere, you know, and we had nukes, right? And there was this whole mutually assured destruction thing. But honestly, maybe that is what kept us in line. But you know what? None of it crumbled. You know, which said we made it. We're still here. We're kind of working through it. Still working through stuff. Still things are getting kind of better, right? They're ne necessarily better for other people. You know who it's not good for? Fucking all the homeless people in the tents, right? It's not good for the people we're bombing overseas. But... Overall, you know, we are, we're still here and we haven't destroyed ourselves. But I think the bottom line is that we own nothing. We're have nothings, guys. We're no longer have nots. We're have nothings. And that's what they're doing. They're pitting the have nots versus the have nothings. Instead of all of us realizing that we should just fucking, we got to unite, you know? And is the answer to go and eat them? Or is the answer to form a voting block, you know, and try to use democracy? I feel like the thing is that our country at least has a release valve in place for nonviolent exchanges of power, right? You can actually switch sides, you know, switch governments, switch sort of uh, course in the middle of what we're doing and not have to have a bloody coup and purges and people go to jail every time. You know, you can use the political system that we have to elect people, put them in office, and they can do... You know, they're going to have a public mandate and do stuff. 
Just that so far, everybody who's been elected, um, in, at least in my lifetime, has not fulfilled a public mandate, but it has fulfilled a corporate one or military industrial one. You know what I mean? They seem to be working for the benefit of an elite class of people, not the people. So, so I think that's where it is. I'm for the people, man. That's the whole thing. I'm like, I mean, do I, would I love to have a lot of money? Sure. <laughs> would I love to be a millionaire? Yeah. Do I want you coming to take my money? No. And do I, but do I think I'm better than you? No. And do I think that we need people, uh, that the best parts of us come from the people in the working class? Yeah. That's who fucking does all the work, right? There's something very noble and honorable about that. There's something great about the elites too, okay? Don't get me wrong. It's not like they're all scum. I'm just trying to say I love them all and they should all give me money, both of them. <laughs> I accept money from both the people. You know, a million people can give me one dollar or one dude can give me a million dollars. I'm down with both, okay? I'm just saying let's stop the fighting, right? Let's get together. Let's be <laughs> Let's get together and give me money. All right, give me all your money. All right, so thank you. I'm glad that that's we had this talk. Um, yes, don't be racist, right? Don't be racist against Asians. So we, you know, we don't all have coronavirus. I mean, a lot of us do. Most of us, the most of the ones that are filled with coronavirus are Asian and specifically Chinese. That's maybe what we got to remember. They're Chinese, okay? They are Chinese, and please let's remember that, okay? Um, and, uh, also our leaders have failed us. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Get out there and vote or don't. All right. I'm not going to shame you for it. Honestly, try to like learn a thing or two about local politics. That's honestly, if I'm going to do anything, be serious, learn about who the fuck you're voting for locally, because that's what actually makes a difference. You know, if you really want to make a difference, there you go. Do local, man. Act locally, bro. Be local, bro. I don't know. Be happy in an, uh, Seek the happiness in yourself. You know what I'm saying? Be honest. Be honest. Live truthfully. Don't be like, try to be tactful. You know what I'm saying? Don't be like that guy who's like, you're ugly or whatever. You know, <laughs> don't be that guy. I'm just saying, just live, live honestly. Be truthful to yourself. Okay. I don't know why I'm doing this. Who am I talking to? Okay. Follow me on Twitter. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram, everybody. Come on. Come on, come get, come, come and push the button and say I follow you. Get on there, Instagram, Twitter, go ahead, share the word. My aunt is telling middle-aged and up people, uh, Korean people, about my comedy. Maybe they're listening to this. Thank you for listening. I appreciate. Is this entertaining? I, I'm 41. <laughs> uh, this is uh, freedom. That's what this is all about. Okay, that's uh, really that's what it's all about. Um. That's what I'm all about. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye.